Hey guys, so um, this is part two um, of my spiritual experiences series. It's uh, very delayed, probably about like, you know, six months later from part one, but hopefully you'll, um, you'll accept my apology on that one. Um, so basically this part is all about spiritual revelation. So what I really just want to do is just discuss like um, a couple, uh, basically just share my testimony of a couple times where um, I've really been led by the Holy Spirit, um, which I, the only reason I say it is not to like glorify myself, but like I just want to share with you just like the sort of stuff that um, God like does and like how he works and it's really really amazing it's the most amazing thing ever it makes me like so excited you know because you're on an adventure and you don't know what you're doing you don't know where you're going you just know god's like uh just taking you somewhere and it's really really amazing um so the first uh the first uh situation that i want to discuss is really like um right at the beginning of when i first came to faith um in general that whole, um, you know, period of when, like, I first started to believe was just unbelievable, you know, I was being taken left, right and centre places by God and it was just so incredible, it was like, you know, every day, it was just like an adventure, you know, it was amazing, um, you know, uh, but what I really want to do is, is focus on one situation where, um, yeah, during that first season was, was amazing, um, it still is, obviously, like, um, yeah, I still, I still, I'm led to do certain things, but it's not as, um, as, as intense as it was in the beginning, because in the beginning, it was like thing after thing after thing after thing, if you know what I mean, um, and I think it really was just to build my faith, because I needed, um, to build my faith really, really quickly, because, God was going to take me overseas and I was going to be completely by myself. So he needed to make sure that my faith was strong enough to not, you know, be overcome straight away. You know, I don't think he really, you know, puts this on everyone straight away because it was a lot that was put on my shoulders. Um, but it was amazing. It was the most exciting period of my life. Like it, it literally every time I think about it, it was just, yeah, it just makes me so pumped up. But anyway, um, so basically... One particular situation that I want to focus on is um, really incredible. I was in Perth, uh, traveling around Australia, doing a bit of work there, doing a bit of holidays as well. Um, and I had a vision while I was watching um, a sort of program documentary about God. I had a vision of uh, a homeless person walking the streets of Brisbane in Australia. And, um, in me and I was flying back to Brisbane the next day. And I immediately knew I needed to go find a homeless person. And like I was saying, um, on the flight back, I was like, um, I was like, I, I need to find a homeless person, homeless person. Like I just had it in my head, like a homeless person, but I didn't know what they looked like. You know, well, you know, I thought it might be the one in the, in the vision. Um, but really, um, really the, the one in the vision was only just, just a homeless person, if you know what I mean? Because if I seen, the homeless person, I would have never known who on earth they were, if you know what I mean. So I just seen a vision of a homeless person, just so I understood to go find a homeless person. Um, so basically, um, I had on my heart, yeah, homeless person, homeless person. And I flew back um, to Brisbane and it was already uh, late. It was, well, it was like evening time. I think it was about eight or nine. Um, and I still, I was like, right, I need to do it. So I went to the shops and I bought like a load of food and I was just like, right, if I'm going to go find a homeless person, I need to like bring some food or something because it's not, you know, what am I going to do? Just like, hello, you know. So anyway, so I like made loads of food, um, got like some plastic plastic containers and stuff and then I, I went round um, to the city centre and this was night time now. So um, I was, uh, I was uh, walking and... Um, uh, so I had a friend with me and basically like we, we went and we, we, cause there's quite a few, um, homeless people on Adelaide street in Brisbane, um, like quite a few. So, you know, I was walking to homeless person to homeless person, giving them some food and stuff. Um, but I, you know, every, everyone that I had, I was like, no, it's not that one. It's not that one. Um, sort of thing. And I, I knew that they weren't the right homeless person, but obviously I still gave them food and stuff and, you know, said like a little something about God or whatever. 
and um, we did like a circle round, um, and then my friend was like, "Oh, let's go down there because um, you know we've already been been that down there." But for some reason, I was like, "No, no, I think we need to go down here, even though we'd already been there." Um, and I was like, yeah, "No, no, no, well, we need to go down here." And so we went down there, and there were two um, two people. There was a woman and a man. Um, and uh, as soon as I sort of got there, I sort I knew that they were they were the ones. Um, and it was the woman that um, I was focusing on. And um, so I got there, and I was just like, "Hey, are you guys hungry or something?" And then she said something like, "Are you crazy? Like, why would you give us food or whatever?" You know. Um, but I was like, no, 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 you know, I'm a Christian. So I like talking a little bit and like gave him some food and stuff. Um, and I started talking to her. Um, and it's actually incredible because she told me her like entire life story. So she told me, you know, she was a prostitute. She told me she was a heroin addict. She told me everything. She literally told me everything. Uh, she told me she'd been raped since she was four years old. She was, uh, you know, her parents gave her up to foster care. She was in and out of homes, you know, constantly getting sexually abused, constantly getting abused and stuff. And um, and I spoke to her and I talked to, talked to her about forgiveness and because I had been through abuse because my dad was abusive. So I told her about that and I was like, look, I've overcome that. Like I had to forgive my father for what, what he'd done. I, said, I spoke to her about forgiveness. And I said, you know, if you forgive their sins then God will forgive all your sins as well. And I was talking to her about that and um and you know I really had to I sort of had to sit down there were like some steps and I really had to sit down like at her feet because she was quite intimidated by me so I was like right I need to sit right down like at her feet so she's above me so um you know so she doesn't get intimidated intimidated about me because um I was anyway it was sort of like you know so that if if I'm down at her feet she can like kick me or she can punch me or something do you know what I mean so it's not like as intimidating um because she really was was quite scared because no one ever took an interest if you know what I mean and so like why is she going to be telling me all these things you know what I mean what am I going to do to her um so obviously she's been through a lot of abuse and stuff like that so I was just like right I'm just going to be as literally like and I said to her like I'm gonna sit like right here so you know if if you can easily just punch me in the face I'm like down here you're up there like you know you can kick me in the face you know I'm not gonna touch you I'm not gonna do anything to you um and so we were talking and I was telling her about God and um and just you know she was telling me her life story she was in tears telling me her life story um and you know just all the abuse that she went through and everything and um and while she was talking like she she didn't like she had really bad english like she didn't know what um she i can't remember what the word was but it was like a simple word and she didn't know what it meant if you know what i mean cuz like she just had such bad grammar grammar cuz obviously she'd had poor poor education in and out of homes if you know what i mean she didn't know what basic words sort of meant if you know what i mean she kept asking oh what does that word mean you know that that sort of thing and, um, and then, um, so I, I, I said, you know, can I pray for you and stuff? And then she was like, you know, oh, you can pray for me, but just don't touch me or something. Cause she was a bit scared. Like she was just a bit scared of me anyway. Um, she didn't really trust me. So anyway, I was like, okay, that's fine. I don't need to touch you, but I, pr I just pray for you. Yeah. So I, 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 um, I prayed for her and then, um, and then basically, um, and then after the prayer, um, we were sort of going to leave. Um, and then she said, oh, by the way, like, what's your name? And I said, my name's Eva. And then she was like, what? And then I was like, yeah, Eva. And then she was like, my daughter's name's Eva. And like, I'm not being funny. Eva's not a common name, right? And after that, her face literally lit up. Her face like lit up like the, and then she started speaking, but she started speaking in the most intelli intelligent way, like formulated sentences that I couldn't even formulate. Like before, she couldn't even, she couldn't, didn't even understand what like basic words meant. And then when she started, she was glowing and she started speaking like um, all these, these like in, intelligent sentences. Like I can't remember because obviously, you know, it was a while ago. I can't remember the exact things that she was saying, but all she kept repeating was, was it's grace, it's grace. It's it's just grace, you know, like she just kept repeating the word grace 
and and I like I didn't even know what she sort of meant. Um, I I was I was just like okay, like you know she just keeps repeating the word grace. Um, and yeah, because I'd literally just come into Christianity, I didn't even realize that that was like a word that um you use a lot if you know what I mean. And she was like, it's just grace, it's just grace. She just kept repeating it. And um and anyway um so so like. I, I said a prayer for the, the guy that was with her as well. Um, he was sort of encouraging me to pray for her and stuff. He was, like, quite getting involved with it. So I said a prayer for him as well. But like I said, she just kept saying, oh, you know, her face just lit up. And, and she was just like, as soon as she knew that, like, um, you know, uh, our, my name was Eva as well, she, she, she knew it was from God. She knew it was a divine appointment because what are the chances? You know what I mean? Um, and she was just like, she just lit up and she was like, oh, it's just grace, it's just grace. Anyway, the next day, I went to church, and um, the, I um, when I got to, when I got to church, uh, the people at church gave me this uh, booklet, and on and on the booklet it said, "Grace means the work is finished," and I was just like, "What on earth?" Like, obviously, I know that like that's talking about Jesus and the cross, but like just the fact that like I had that vision to like go to that like um homeless person and then like she kept repeating it's just grace it's just grace it's just grace and then the next day I get that and it says grace means the work is finished because I was like why is this woman talking why does she keep saying it's grace you know and then like I got that and I was like no way like grace means the work is finished and I was just like like the early Christian like I don't know like a week or two into Christianity and I was just like <laughs> you know, like I was just like cool. So um, so that 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 was like a really really cool um sort of thing because it was just like you know just one thing after another. Like I had this vision, I had this homeless person, I had this leaflet, and it was just like wow. Like what are the chances? Like there's no way that you can explain that in any other way. So that's the first thing that um I wanted to share, and I love that story because you know um it's it's just great because it it's you know one of my first sort of um encounters of being led by the holy spirit to to talk to someone and you know and do that and i i was i was all over it i was like yes this is amazing just send me wherever you want to send me like i I'll, I'll you know do whatever for you like just send me send me use me it's awesome right um another time um where i basically had like a prophetic uh word spoken over me was um well and not another time that I had a prophetic... Another time where I had um, some sort of spiritual experience, I had a prophetic word spoken over me um, at church. There was a guest preacher, and um, before he even started speaking, during the uh, worship service, I really felt on my heart that God was telling me, you need to go out of Australia. And um, I was like, really? Is, it, is, is, is now the time? And, um, and then, um, the preacher was preaching and then afterwards he said, you know, anyone that wants to come up for prayer, like, come, come get, come get prayer. And, um, he said to me, uh, I can see you abroad with, um, like several other people, like, like, you know, doing like work for God, like, you know, having a little ministry or whatever going on, you know what I mean? And he said, you know, I can see you abroad. You're going to be the person that takes your faith abroad. And I was like, right, okay, so yeah, God's clearly telling me sort of to go somewhere. Um, and then we went to, um, me and um, my friend, we went to um, another prophet's house because he wanted a word on something and I was just sort of there. And, um, and you know, I told my friend, I was like, you know, I'm, I think God's telling me to go, you know, God, I think God's telling me to go back overseas, you know. Um, and, um, but I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't told this, uh, prophet, I just told, um, my friend, um, and when we got to the prophet's, uh, house, we'd never met him before, ever, um, we sat down, and he said, um, this is a word, uh, for one of you, he didn't say specifically for me, but it was obvious, um, he said that I've got a word for one of you, uh, when God tells you to go, you have to go, and I was like, 
Right, okay, so looks like I'm packing my bags and uh, going overseas. <laughs> um, yeah, which was which was really hard. I mean, it was super, super, uh, super hard. But I, I felt just a peace about it. I was like, I'm going to go, you know, do what God wants me to do. I'm going to leave because now it's the time, time to leave, you know. But I left, like, a strong Christian family to go completely by myself, you know. And it has been really hard, but, you know, it was God's calling. And um, that was another sort of spiritual revelation that happened there. Um, the Another one that I just want to really quickly say, um, because I think, you know, probably getting bored now. Um, another one was just recently, uh, I think about two, two, three weeks ago, I was on the bus home from work and uh, God, God said to me, go, um, go feed homeless tonight again. Uh, you need to go go find homeless, uh, like a ho homeless person. And like while I was on the bus home, and then I was like, right, okay, I got home, got just literally just quickly, I think I quickly got changed or I just threw something down or something and then I was back into town. And then on the bus, um, ooh, ooh, ooh sorry. Um, and then on the bus, uh, I can't remember whether it was me or God but whether it was me or God, I knew that the first two homeless people I seen, the first two, I'm going to take to dinner, right? And um, I walked down the street and there was one homeless person sat down and another homeless person stood up and they were like having an argument. And and there was like one homeless person, the one stood up, who he had like a beer in his hand, he was called um, Frank. I can't actually remember the one sitting down, the younger fella, um, what his name was. But anyway, he had like a beer in his hand and they were having an argument. And then I said, um, and then uh, as I sort of like started talking to the one sitting down, the one um, stood up uh, while they were sort of having an argument. He sort of walked off, the sort of, you know, in a sort of, um, in a huff or whatever. Um, and I said to the one sitting down, I said, you know, are you hungry? And he said, oh, I'm banned from McDonald's. I said, yeah, that's not what I asked you. Are you hungry? Um, and he was like, yeah. And then I was like, okay, well, what do you feel like? What, what do you feel like eating? And then he was like, you know, he said a restaurant. And then I was like, cool, let's go. Um, so we got up and we started walking. And then we had Frank round the corner. And we sort of like passed him. And then, um, and then he starts like shouting abuse. Like he's like... You know, because obviously they were just arguing. So he was like, oh, you know, yeah, you know, whatever. He's still got a beer in his hand. Um, and then I was like, oi, you, are you hungry? And then he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, F you, F you, you know. And then I was like, um, I was like, what? So you're not hungry? You don't want to come with us? And then, and then he was like, no, no, I don't. And I was like, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Now, come on, let's go. So um so he he put his uh can of beer in in the in the bin and then he just turned to the the completely opposite person. He was like, Oh, oh, are we going are we going out for a meal? Like, you know. Right, anyway. And then um and then so we sat down and we sat down and um, you know, they were talking and stuff and um, you know, I I brought God up, obviously, and um it was really quite amazing because um, it was almost as if God was speaking through them. It was incredible. I barely needed to say anything. I was sat there in between these two homeless guys and one guy was talking about how, um, how you know, there's no, um, there's no joy in material possessions because that's just temporary. You know, all of that stuff's just temporary. And, you know, it was incredible because it was, it was like a biblical teaching. I was like, you know, you, you go, like you preach to that other homeless guy. And then the other homeless guy, Frank, was preaching about, um, because I brought up miracles and that other homeless guy said he was, he was preaching to the, the Frank was preaching to the other homeless guy about how miracles do work and how God does, does work because he had prayer over him um, a while ago, he was going through like a really, really bad depressive state where every single uh, two seconds he was walking down the street and he was just breaking down, crying. And then someone prayed over him and um, and he, he that stopped and he, he felt better. Um, so, so, you know, he, he was trying to convince him that miracles exist and the other homeless guy was trying to convince him that it's fine being homeless because 
um, you know, all this sort of material possessions, they're only temporary anyway. So I barely needed to say anything. These two homeless guys were just preaching uh, for each other and I was just sat there in the middle like, this is incredible. Um, and then, yeah, but um, obviously, sorry, it's really weird. For some reason, it just like stopped, just like randomly stopped the recording. Anyway, um, so after we got out of the restaurant, um, really, really sweet, they went to the bus stop and stuff. Um, and then uh, while we were waiting for my bus, um, we were like praying together. So, um, so with Frank, um, we sort of like uh, prayed for his like alcoholism and stuff. And um, he said he had like a bad knee. So like I was praying for his healing and stuff. And I'm not even joking. I could like feel like tingling sensation like in my f in in like in my hands like running through my fingers and stuff. It was really really weird. Like um, like I don't know. Like I don't know if if you know his knee was healed or whatever um, I'm not sure um, but like I could so certainly feel it and it wasn't just me it wasn't just me like freaking out I was like you know because I've prayed for healings before where I've not felt anything but you know I, I don't know anyway um, and I also prayed for the younger fella as well and he was he was like the more skeptical one um, during the meal and then when it got to praying for him I was like okay so I'll, I'll say a quick prayer for you too you know and I was like praying for him and then like he himself was like and pray for this, and pray for this, and pray for this. <laughs> so he was like, you know, he was like, yeah, yeah, and ask for that too, like, you know. Um, so that was really cool, because um, he, he got involved in the end, um, and it was really nice, you know, like, I hugged them both at the end, and, you know, I was like, you know, it's been, it's been really, really cool, and they were really, really grateful as well, so it was awesome. Um, so that was really cool, uh, and after I got back, I was, I was really happy. Um, uh, actually, really, really quickly, I've just remembered, um, last time I was at church on Sunday, um, I, um, uh, basically they said, uh, does anyone want to share their testimony? Um, and I, like, my, my heart, like, literally sank, because I, I, obviously I don't know anyone in the church, um, at all, it was only my second time going, my heart, like, sank, um, and I knew God wanted me to speak up. Um, so I stood up and I like I gave my testimony and stuff. Um, I was like, oh man, how am I gonna do this? Because you know I'd never I'd never stood up in church or whatever. But I said it, and even though I had tears and everything like that, you know, at the end, um, people came up to me and said that was like a really powerful testimony. Like, thank you so much for sharing it and stuff. And I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, at least my testimony is like helping people. So um, so yeah, so there are, like a few times where I've had. Uh, spiritual revelation like you know just led by the holy spirit and just crazy stuff happening and yeah it's been been really really cool and um, my third one is going to be about spiritual warfare so yeah thanks a lot guys <laughs>